All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Vicky3 Academy, and here we are discussing how to build an empire. So how to build an empire is going to be a video primarily aimed at helping you understand the economic and political implications of empire rather than the mechanical aspect of conquering a bunch of nations. That we are going to cover in a separate video. Um, but I think how to build an empire is going to be absolutely critical for everyone to understand in Victoria 3 due to the cascading political and economic implications of of empire building. So let's discuss very briefly um, the economic and political implications of empire building in the real world. Um, this is the 19th century, so we are going to see the number of independent nations in the world dramatically decrease between 1836 and 1936 um, due to mostly due to industrialization and then imperialization, just kind of like conquering the world. Um, and that's that's sort of what we can discuss here. So what, uh, what are the economic forces that are driving a, a nation towards imperialism? Well, as the game is going to progress, and we'll put a video down below, but as the game progresses, you are going to build up your construction because you that is the, the way that you increase the speed of your growth, the way you grow your growth, the way you accelerate is by building this and that is in turn going to require that as you increase on your construction sector uh, upgrade that you're going to need new and more complicated resources so you're going to need all of the things that are going to be here on steel excuse me steel frame at some point same with arc welded um, and so you you gotta you gotta like go out in search of the the resources that you are going to need to grow um, but that is only the tip of the the explanation here um, because you're also going out in search of growing to by finding more peasants um, for those of you who have watched my my playthroughs you know that if you build a bunch of stuff and therefore grow your economy really quickly you are actually going to run out of peasants in a blindingly fast speed so you need to be um, aware that one of the reasons that people are, are building these empires in the 19th century is not purely um, because they are going out in search of industrial resources like coal, um, although that is certainly one of the reasons behind it, but they're also going out in search of uh, pops. Um, where's a... Can we, do we have a way to do that? No, we don't. Um, we can show it with, with global GDP, but that's not really going to describe what we're looking for. What we're really looking for are humans. Um, and you can you can show population density on here pretty, pretty nicely, and you'll see that pops are all over here, and if you can get a bunch of those pops to move back to your, um, to your empire because you've puppeted them or because you've directly conquered them, that's going to give your growth somewhere to go. Because otherwise you end up with a position where like you really don't have any peasants or anything like that. And you can build, you can build it and hopefully the, the pops will come to you, but it's easier to go to your pops. It's more reliable to just go to your pops and then take them over there. Um, so that's sort of like why we see imperialism in the late 19th century is that there's this, this desperate hunger for resources and pops. But prior to that, there's other reasons. Um, so prestige, this is like, I think, probably the most important metric in the game right now, simply because it determines who is a great power and who is not. Um, and great powers, I like, they, this is, these things are not the same. Major power get major power is minus 25% loan interest rate. Great power is minus 50. Um, th like that, that alone is a, a reason to care because that's going to dramatically cut the expenses of, of utilizing debt um, in this game. And so being, so prestige is important, right? Prestige is the way that you are, that you are perceived in the world. And so like, that's why as part of like the, the um, Berlin Conference in the car in the scramble for Africa, Belgium of all people demands this slice of the Congo because they a they wanted a way, every, like everybody out here wanted a way to prop up Belgium and give them um, a little bit of political clout so that way hopefully they would be happy being independent from uh, all of the bullies around them, but also it gave them prestige. It gave them prestige, uh, and so don't don't ever overlook that. But in game there are some really strong economic deterministic forces um, that are going to govern why you care about uh, about imperialism prior to, to even running out of pops. So 
let's just take a look at the French market. So the French market, um, we can see here, we have a minus 1.17K balance for grain. What that means, of course, is that all uh, people who are currently producing grain are getting a little bit of extra money because the grain is expensive, but then everyone who has to purchase the grain has to pay a little bit more for it. So what that means is by having a negative grain balance, we are helping people who are living rurally while hurting people who are living in urban centers. And because we are gonna be trying to industrialize, that's kind of bad. Um, we don't really care that much about grain prices in regards to serfs and peasants other than um, it's expensive that will help them. It's cheap that will hurt them, and the and what you but what you can do is you can understand how um, goods are produced in regards to peasants, and that will help you understand why imperialism, even in 1836, can be very helpful. So, subsistence farms in Normandy, um, you know, 416,000. We have importantly in France free peasants. If you have serfdom, that's going to lower your subsistence output and therefore the income of the peasants in question. Um, it, but if you have free peasants, you are going to miss out on this nice little bonus grain. So just be aware that what that means, of course, is that if you are desperate for adding more grain to your market, um, puppeting people who have serfdom is generally a little more beneficial than pu puppeting people who don't. Um, and it's also going to be a, a little easier because they're not typically going to be strong. So what happens on subsistence farms? Well, a lot of these pops are gonna be generating subsistence and therefore trying to keep themselves alive, but they're also generating this little bundle of goods. This basket, this basket here are what I call the, the peasant goods. These are the things that are being made on subsistence farms. Um, grain is gonna be first amongst them. This is the main thing that you're gonna be getting out of this. But you also get a little, a, some other things. You get some wood, you get some fabric, you get some intoxicants, you get some services, you get some basic clothes and basic furniture. And so what that means is that this is a, a nice little, neat little bundle of goods that as you build, you will be depleting your natural production of these things. So as you industrialize, as a powerful nation, you will gradually increase the price of all of these things. Um, and therefore, you may increase the cost of construction, for instance, because you're gonna be building your peasants away and that means you're gonna be getting less wood and less fabric. So what, what can you do to, to balance that out? Well, you can go out in search of other nations that, ha that, that can fix that for you, right? So let's just check out the Vietnamese market. The Vietnamese market, because they have, um, they have serfdom. Uh, they are going to have an enormous surplus on green, which is going to help us back in France. Um, it will hurt our peasants a little bit because a lot of their, their value is going to be tied up in subsistence, but some of it's going to be tied up in the price of green locally for us. Um, yeah, so net income, you can see here that most of it is gonna be coming from the subsistence output, but a little bit's coming from wages, and that wage is gonna be coming a little bit from the price of grain. And so by decreasing the price of grain, we are hurting the peasants. Um, but that's kind of like the peasants problem because by adding Dainam, we aren't just going to be adding the entirety of the Vietnamese market to the French market, but we're also going to be adding like in terms of their production, but we're also going to be adding all of their demand. So all of this luxury clothes demand that we have here, um, plus 75% luxury clothes, that's something that we can just kind of like splash in on France's demand um, and increase the profitability on textile mills and furniture manufactories. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that. We're gonna do disable AI so that way we can puppet uh, Dynam in, in one war without actually having to fight it. Um, but we can, we can go ahead and puppet Dynam and what'll happen is because these guys have this pent up unmet demand, um, oh, we don't need to, we don't need that. We can just do puppet, bam. Because the pops in Dynam have this this pent up demand in the in the market, um, this these luxury clothes will immediately be added into our own demand, and they'll help out absolutely everybody who's working in a textile mill. Um, 
Same with just this pent up demand for clothes, right? This is a, a, ne a negative balance for clothes uh, while also still adding some sell orders. So that way we're not like crashing things and causing us to have uh, input good shortages. But let's let's just let's just confirm, right? We're textile mills right now we're at 25 to 28, 19 to 20. Um, and then whenever we switch over to Dynam, it's not going to be as dramatic because Dynam is not like an enormous population center, but it's it's useful. Um, we are going to capitulate, bam, and then we'll switch back to uh, to France. And because we've added their market to our own, um, now there's going to be a very small uptick in in the value here for people working in textile mills. They're gonna, they're gonna, let's, let's go to the, to Normandy. It's gonna be hard to keep everything, um, fixed because of course, like, even if you turn the AI, AI off, it's, it's kind of hard to, to track it all perfectly. Um, but we can see that, that these guys should be making a little bit more money once, now that, now that they've got, oh, I should have, I should have gotten that, that first, but they should be making a little bit more money now that they have, um, uh, more demand added and so that that's really that's really critical to understand when it comes to building an empire is that added demand is a, a huge uh, additional function but the biggest reason that you should be um, interested in doing imperialism in like especially the the first half of of victoria 3 is interest groups so if you're playing france and you have a desperate need for, um, you know, like opium or whatever, you could directly own some of these territories and build, build, ter and build uh, buildings there yourself. But by doing so, you are building things that are going to employ aristocrats, right? So let's just pop back over to Vietnam. Um, these opium plantations, these are employing a bunch of aristocrats, right? They're employing aristoc aristocrats and clergymen, um, some farmers, and what that means is because of the nature of the, the Vietnamese economy, the landowners are in charge, and then the devout, and then the rural folk. Whereas over here in France, the landowners are not very powerful, and it's because we've, we've moved past the agricultural buildings. So what that means is that if you have interest in getting goods from agricultural buildings, you can build them yourself. I strongly encourage people to try not to build any agricultural buildings unless you need to um, before you get intensive agriculture and then like the cash crops you can build the industrial cash crops but like the like tobacco and tea and stuff I would just wait until you get pump jacks because this is a this is a really really big upgrade I th I think I think overall because of the nature of the the way the markets in Victoria 3 work um imperializing via puppeting is going to be one of the easiest ways for a market to grow. And that's actually sort of like what happens historically, right? That historically we do see France um, getting into to Vietnam sort of this way, right? Not, not via doing a direct, um, a direct conquer state on the, on the territory, but by creating a puppet there and then annexing it later. Same with like Korea annexing, um, or is it with Japan annexing Korea or with uh, the EIC existing sort of like under as a subject of, of Great Britain, that this sort of like loose confederacy, A, it's easier to build and B, it's easier to control the, uh, the social implications of economic development. What that means for you as someone who is playing Victoria 3 um, is that you, you need to be aware of, of what your current position is in regards to growth. Um, Cause you may need to go out and in, in search of pops, right? If you've built up a, an enormous construction industry um, and you've run out of peasants to upgrade, cause that's the easiest way to acquire growth is to take a peasant and make, give them a real job. Um, but that's, that's the easiest way to do it. It's not the only way. Um, but that is the easiest way to acquire growth. And what that means is, of course, eventually you'll run out of peasants and then you got to go out there and get them. Um, so keep just just keep in mind what imperialism can do for you in Victoria 3. Um, it can solve a lot of your own economic problems. And so I encourage people to think about um, war 
and, and diplomacy, but mostly war, uh, not necessarily as a failure of, of economic determinism, but as a consequence of economic determinism, because because you'll feel it if you if you build any semblance of a functional economy in Victoria three, you're going to run out of resources no matter what you do. Um, and so that's what that's what looking outside your borders is all about. All right. Uh, that's Walker and that's how to build an empire. All right. Take care.